The Andrew Jurgens Company, makers of Jurgens Lotion, the most famous name in hand care, and new Woodbury soap, now with seven smoothing face cream oils, presents Bride and Groom. Hello. We're glad you're with us at Bride and Groom today to meet a very artistic young man who writes both music and poetry. Well, I'm not much on rhymes myself, but consider this your invitation to attend the meet the young man and the girl who's his inspiration. I should say I'm not. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, you John. are a real sensation. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. <laughs> well, I'm not very much in the rhyme department either, so do you mind if I say a few words in prose? Go right ahead. At last, a new shampoo formula, so wonderful to use, it gives you beautiful hairdos right after shampooing. And that is New Woodbury Shampoo. New Woodbury Shampoo washes your hair shining clean, rinses out easily, but it never, never dries your hair. That's because there's a special ingredient in New Woodbury Shampoo that protects each individual hair strand and helps to preserve the natural oils that are in your hair. What's more, I have proof right here of everything I've told you. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Julie. That's a mighty pretty hair, dude. You mind Thanks. if I ask when you shampooed your hair? This morning, Julie, believe it or not. And it was so easy to set, too. This is just how it looked when I combed it out. Well, turn around. Let's see the back. Oh, my, that looks so pretty. You know, I never dared wash my hair right before a date because it took days to settle down. But new Woodbury is marvelous. Thank you, Phyllis. And right now, there's a special introductory sale on New Woodbury Shampoo. And this generous dollar-sized bottle is yours for only 59 cents. You'll be delighted with New Woodbury Shampoo and with your beautiful hairdos right after shampooing. Now I'd like you to meet with Sonia Young, 26, from Nashville, Tennessee, and her bridegroom, E.D. Thompson, 29, and also from Nashville. And it's my understanding you two have a lot of other things in common besides Nashville as your hometown. That's right, John. We are both graduates of Peabody College in Nashville, and we both taught in the Davidson County School System there. Uh, Sonia sang in my church choir, and now we've taken two new jobs in Anderson, South Carolina. And incidentally, we'll both teach music there for the first time, and that's... Uh, Certainly another thing in Music common. is the thing I, that's held us together so long. I understand he's very musical, Sonia. That's right. When I met E.D., he was the first clarinetist in the Nashville Symphony Orchestra, and he's been the band director at Hillsborough High School for the last six years. I don't guess I could possibly count all the concerts I've attended since <laughs> I've been going with E.D. Well, uh, incidentally, how did you happen to meet him, and when did this all start? Well, this was at Peabody College. I had enrolled in an English class that I decided not to take, and so I went to the professor and argued with him a little to put me into a play production class. And he finally consented, and I sat down beside Sonia. But it was about three months before I saw her again, and this time it was at a concert at Peabody. Mm -hmm. She was seated, I guess, a couple of rows behind me, and... Well, that's the time I had the dream about you. She was beginning to tell me about a dream she had, and I was about ready to ask her to go to the senior prom, which I did. And she accepted? That's right. And that was the beginning, as I understand it, of a six-year courtship. Now, Sonia, when did you realize that E.D. was going to be something very special in your life? Well, the first thing that attracted me to E.D. was his musical ability. And then when I found out that he was a poet, too, I thought he was a pretty special person. Which he is, of course. Yes. I can tell you a, a funny incident about that poem Please if you'd do. like to hear it. I'd love to. Well, in English class one day, our professor, Miss Frieda Johnson, read this very lovely poem about music. And while I listened, it reminded me so much of E.D. that I copied it down and read it to him that day in the library. While I was reading, he seemed to be rather amused, and, and when I finished, he told me that he had written the poem. Oh, golly. <laughs> that's a wonderful story, and that's, of course, at another time when you realized how much you cared about him. Now, how about the proposal? I understand poets are very good at that. Well, uh, I'm afraid E.D.'s proposal was not very poetic. Oh? The formal proposal came, however, on Valentine's Day of this year when he gave me my ring. But mm -hmm. uh, he actually didn't have to say too much because we have known for a long time that we were meant for each other. Oh, well, that's the way it should be. And I won't add any inadequate words of my own. I just wish you well and present these matched keepsake wedding rings which speak for themselves. And whatever your dream about E.D. was so long ago, Sonia, it will more than come true as the Reverend Herbert C. Greenland of the Morsemere Methodist Church asks you to exchange these rings at the altar. Chapel, the organ song. 
softly play on the altar the candles softly glow voices sing a prayer is said and in the chapel Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is ordained of God and is to be honored by all men. Into this holy estate, E.D. Thompson, Jr. and Sonia Ann Young come now to be joined. E.D., will you take this woman to be your wedded wife to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her? and forsaking all others keep you only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I will. Sonia, will you take this man to be your wedded husband to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, and forsaking all others keep you only unto him, so long as you both shall live? I will. Will you join your right hands together, please? Repeat the vows after me. I, E, D, take thee, Sonia. I, E, D, take thee, Sonia. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. From this time forward. From this time forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. I, Sonia, take thee, E, D. I, Sonia, take the E.D. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. From this time forward. From this time forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. You drop your hands, please. E.D., what token do you offer in pledge of your vows? You take this ring, E.D., place it on the third finger of the left hand of your bride, hold it in place, and repeat after me, this ring I give. This ring I give. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Sonia, what token do you offer in pledge of your vow? You take this ring, Sonia, place it on the third finger of the left hand of your groom. Hold it in place and repeat after me. This ring I give. This ring I give. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Now will you join your right hands together again, please? For as much as E. D. and Sonia have consented together in holy wedlock and have pledged their faith each to the other, by the authority that is committed unto me, I pronounce them husband and wife. Whom, therefore, God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, send thy blessing upon this man and this woman whom we bless in thy name, that they may surely perform and keep the vow and covenant now between them made. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. What a beautiful moment that was, Julie. Wasn't it pretty? Uh, you know, I have a feeling that those two have shared so much and have so much in common, the years of friendship and music and poetry, are going to be very happy to come in the years ahead. I think you're right, John. I'm always interested in men's theories, especially where they concern women. And beauty. And beauty. Well, you tell us about it. Because there's a popular theory among men, and I'm sure you've heard it, 
that women will go to any lengths, to any expense, to be beautiful. Well, now that's not so, is it? Because I know of no pleasanter, quicker, or more inexpensive way of soaking up beauty than a bath with new Woodbury soap. It's a true beauty bath. And the lather is rich and abundant, and it's different from any lather in the world. That's because new Woodbury soap is enriched with seven smoothing face cream oils. And they're intended to help replace the oils in your skin that you would ordinarily wash away. And it's great for your complexion, too. You'll love its delicate floral fragrance. Yes, you'll love new Woodbury soap for the skin you love to touch. And we're back. Uh, congratulations to you, E.D. Thank you, John. You know, you wouldn't quote any of your poetry, but you better sit down, because when Phil and I start rhyming, <laughs> oh, boy. Phil, I got a problem. Yeah? What rhymes with Hoover? Uh, dirt remover. Oh, boy. Uh, and that's what it is, to a real handy wedding gift for you, Sonia and Ed. And you'll have cooking down to an absolute science with the aid of a fine Westinghouse appliance. That is, with an iron, a waffle baker, a toaster, a food crafter, the Thompsons will dine happily ever after. Well, here's an ode to Reed and Barton. It's Marlboro, it's Sterling, it's Silver. What's more, it's your Reed and Barton service for four. I guess you've already heard that bit of rhyme, good foods just happen when you're cooking on a tappan. But take my word for it, someday you'll know it. It'll cook a fine meal for the hungriest poet. And now for a bit of prose that spells out a lot of fine Jergens and Woodbury cosmetics for Sonia, including Woodbury face powder, which you can pack in these cases, designed by Samsonite to really go places. And you'll be packing this luggage very soon to take with you on your honeymoon. Well, Sonia and Edie, maybe we're not the world's greatest bards, but even Shakespeare, I've got a notion, would envy your honeymoon in beautiful Goshen. Just look at the car you'll be driving, Edie. It's a new 1954 Pontiac Silver Street Chieftain. And look at your destination, the charming Goshen Inn, set uh, in the beautiful countryside of upstate New York. Now, we've made reservations for you as personal guests of manager Walter Nighthold and the New York State Hotel Association. And I know you're just going to love the quaint village, the exciting Hamiltonian racetrack, the friendly people, the quiet country so close to the busy city. Oh, it's an ideal spot where you can relax as if you were a thousand miles away, or you can drive into Manhattan for a thrilling evening on the town. Oh, you know, there's so much to do. There's a theater. All of New York is at your feet, and also the beautiful countryside. But however you spend your time, I know you'll have the time of your lives at the delightful Goshen Inn. Well, whether you're a city dweller or a country feller, Here's something you'll discover about living and housekeeping anywhere. If your hands could talk, they'd probably say, oh, here come more of those awful pots and pans. And no wonder your hands feel that way. They wash 4,500 pots and pans a year, not to mention 22,000 dishes or the 1,400 pounds of laundry. Of course, detergents help speed up that work, but they can also rob your hands of natural oils and youthful softness. Every day, more smart hands are reaching for Jergens lotion because they know that's the most effective way to avoid detergent hands. After detergents, after any harsh soap or cleanser, smooth on pure white Jergens lotion. It never just coats your skin, instead it penetrates instantly, helps replace the softening moisture your hands need. You can use detergents often, but don't let him feel it in your hands. So be sure to use Jergens lotion. Avoid detergent hands. Ten cents to one dollar plus tax. Monday we're going to meet a young man who joined the army when he was just 16 years old. He's 22 now and during those six years it seems he's lived a thousand lives overseas in the military service, Korea, and three terrible years as a prisoner of the Chinese Reds. But when he came back to civilian life he found that there was still another life waiting for him and a happy one. We hope you'll be with us to Monday on Bride and Groom to hear the story and meet the girl who made him so happy. It's the same time on these same NBC stations. Bride and Groom has been brought to you by the Andrew Jurgens Company, makers of Jurgens Lotion and new Woodbury Soap. <laughs>